Hey, welcome everyone. Uh, another episode here in the uh, crazy life of uh, vintage RVing. And uh, what I'm doing right now is we're going to be walking backwards here a little bit in order to get to the RV. But in any case, um, you know, sometimes it's the simple things, right? I mean, I've been working on the carb, uh, tweaking the carb a little bit, trying to figure out what's going on with that. And also working on some other ancillary projects, you know, busting some hard lines. There's pinholes seem to show up everywhere. But in any case, um, this episode here is going to probably um, show you uh, a prime example of um, sometimes it's just the simple things. And, uh, you know, I've been working on why the 454 has been running like a pig. And I think I've probably found out why. It was... Uh, Probably soon after I replaced the wires with some 10 millimeter, really super spark plug wires. And uh, I may have screwed some things up. But in the meantime, I did get to replace some other parts that were pretty old and needed to be replaced. But it, in the meantime, this guy was running like a pig and there was probably a simpler reason why. Um, so stay tuned. See what's going on. We replaced the... Uh, main fuel line up into the carburetor i've done an alternative fix there you'll see instead of a hard line i'm not doing you know oem stuff i'm trying to make it work for my skill level and what i need to do and also um, again learning new things and also relearning some old stuff that's pretty basic and i should have known better so watch the video if you can learn something uh laugh at my stupidity um enjoy what I've done uh, like I said it's one of those things and uh, if you're a new viewer and you haven't subscribed please subscribe we've got a lot of fix it videos you'll you may enjoy and learn something from um, if you're an existing subscriber thanks for viewing appreciate it and give a thumbs up where you can and uh, again trying to build the channel and uh, hopefully I will escape from New York at some point uh, when I can, when I'm able to, and uh, take some trip videos, which should be really cool. Take care. Happy, safe, and healthy RV. Okay. As they start every video that way, I've gotten my. Uh, just see here, my hard line got a little twisted with me uh, screwing it in, or you know, getting it threaded in and everything, but that's fine. It twisted a little bit, but it won't leak. I've got to tighten up these two screws here. As you can see, as they go through the thing here, I'm going to tighten those down and make sure that my fuel line is nice and secure over my little nubbin here on the hard line. I try to keep the straight screwdriver from coming off. But again, I've got, as you can see, I've got two here for safety. One on either side of that nubbins thing here. You know, if one gets loose, the other one will help keep it tight. So I've already screwed in the um, the one for. The uh, fuel pump, I have not replaced the fuel pump yet, but I will. I just want to try this out, make sure that this is good to go. And uh, so we'll go down below. So I fed that. You can see here I fed the line there, and you can see it goes down in front of the engine. And uh, what's going to say there it is there. You can see it running there. So I'm going to pull that a little more snug and then cut it off with a utility knife down below. And then I've got my two other hose clamps which I prepped to slide over the hose and uh, get that set and uh, gonna try it out gonna see if it repressurizes and see if I can start her up okay well this is kind of upside down underneath the RV but I think you can see here um, I've got the uh, new line installed here that I did here the nickel copper alloy line I put two here and the bulge is like right here on the on the fitting I did here so that goes up up into uh, towards here but I kept it a little snug as I was hoping to do here just to kind of keep things 
this thing is this is kind of malleable which is kind of cool um, to keep it to make sure that it's as it travels upwards it's not going to create any sort of it's not going to snag on something as it goes up through I don't know if you can see that or not so I've kept it fairly close to the front of the engine um, and I think this will be better if something happens because it's easier to replace the hose than try to yank the hard line out so that's what I'm doing here but in the meantime I'm going to I am going to replace uh, the mechanical fuel pump and replace these lines and everything and uh, this one here is really just left over from all the stuff that poured out of the other fitting and I sprayed it all down so I'm hoping that one's no leaking otherwise I got to get another hose and another fitting and blah 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 I'm trying to get this so it fits right make sure everything is good and ready to go here and uh, make sure I don't have any loose connections on these uh, hose fittings that's the return line to the fuel tank with uh, any overpressure so uh, yeah so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to start her up here see what happens A breezy, breezy, breezy Saturday afternoon, about four o'clock. And uh, so I've been charging up batteries and testing out generator sets and all that good stuff, making sure that things are charging. This ran for a little while but shut off because it's got a low fuel indication on it because I've you know got less than a quarter tank in the rig. But I got my uh, battery going here. And uh, you remember I've been talking about the carb, you know, it's been running rough, blah, blah, blah. The engine seems to be running like a pig, yada, yada. So I'm in here, and of course, in the previous episode, I'm replacing these uh, wonderful Chinese 10 millimeter uh, spark plug wires, which uh, don't, I can't clip them into anything. And going back to the old 7 millimeter jobbers or 8 millimeter guys here 8 millimeter premium super mag by uh, ac delco and you know i was always missing this bit here because the bigger uh, wires just wouldn't fit over it and of course i have my handy dandy diagram now i gotta tell you this is a kind of a rookie mistake but you know it was always kind of running rough and just didn't seem to have a lot of power and blah 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 right it was always kind of running as i said like a pig and you know, I've been dealing with the carb and um, replaced the EGR valve up there, did the fuel line as you can see. And I'm like looking at this diagram and I'm just pulling plug wires and putting you know, replacing them with the with these back again and trying to get them back in some semblance of order and back in the little clips here and stuff. But I noticed something weird. So here are the diagram I've got all the plug wires like that's three, that's three, that's five. You know, that's five, right? So, I mean, you're going through, that's one, that's one. Okay, that's cool. And that's number three, and this is number five. And I did number seven, because, you know, seven's all the way in the back. That's pretty short. Got that hooked up right down there, okay? Right down there. So, then I started looking at number five and number three. And number five goes, and if, if you follow me here, number five goes this way. And it's a little hard to see because I'm going to have to pull this open here. Number five kind of goes 
to a spark plug. There's the front spark plug, okay? So there's the front spark plug. That is number one, okay? That's number one. That's number one, right? You follow number one, number one, number one, number one. Number one, number one goes right, right down there, right down, right there. So this one here, as you can see, there's another one. Hopefully we can get down there. You can see the shield there. So there's number three, right? So, okay, okay, number three. Number three. Number three. Number three. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, wait, hold on a second. Um, that says number five. That's plugged into five. So, okay, wait, maybe I'm just screwed up. So there's number three. Okay, so let's follow number three. Number three's right here, okay? Number three's right, I'm twisting it right here. Number three, number three, number three. Number three, number three, number three is right here. Um, and there's number, number seven. Um, I'm thinking number five and number three are switched. I'm just saying. Ah, rookie mistake. So, here we go. This happened on the Dodge Tioga where somebody had, uh, I didn't know the wiring diagram, I didn't know the firing order on the 360. And um, apparently the previous owner swapped two plug wires. And so it was running on a six cylinder. So, you know, it was running kind of crappy. I did some service to it, put the wires back in the order I thought they were back originally, flipped two more plug wires. Thing was running as a four cylinder, and I gotta tell you, we were in um, South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, uh, driving the back roads, and the thing wouldn't go above 50. And it was crazy. We talked to some guy in a transmission shop on a Sunday uh, while we were in South Carolina, and he talked us through it. And he goes, Here's your firing order, and he ran off the numbers. Blah, 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 blah. And I go, Oh, I've got four wires out of order, put them back in. The thing ran like a race car through the parking lot uh when we got them all hooked up right so i'm going to do this get these two plug wires replaced and actually put them in the right order and i'm going to start the engine up and that might start to fix some of my rough uh, idling issues and other things i'm surprised the car the uh engine was running like it was but we're gonna try it okay so i'll be right back well i just started her up i had to use some of the old wires because the lengths weren't right and uh, one of the one of them pulled this clean out when I pulled uh, the plug wire out, so it kind of ruined uh, it. Kind of ruined it. So I swapped out. It looks like I've got the right order now. Uh, it definitely is running a little smoother in idle. I was running it about. 900 RPM right now. We're gonna we're gonna give it a little bit of juice here, and uh, see what happens. I can get if I can get this light the right way. Probably not, but whatever. We're gonna give it a little uh, juice here. Doesn't seem to be backfiring. And I gotta tell you, the whole RV's kinda cranking a little bit. When I hit the throttle, the RV kinda does one of these jobs. Hmm. Well. What do you know? One eight four three six five seven two. The firing order for Chevy four fifty four. And I may have swapped out the five and the three, which did not allow it to run very well. Oh, 
Whoa! It's always the simple things, isn't it? Or I hope it's those simple things. At least the brakes were the simple things. That's going to be another video when I bleed the rear brake lines because, as you know, my brake light is still on. And I've got this thing uh, still at a little higher RPM than I want. I probably will adjust the uh, idle screw to drop the idle down once this warms up. See, there's the idle screws right, right there, down there, where my finger is, right there. That's the idle screw, so I may change that a little bit in order to get this to idle the way it should be. I have my little shorty screwdriver, don't know where it is right now, but I'll find it. And uh, we'll make these adjustments so I get all these plug wires everywhere. I got a mix mash. I'll probably order another set. A couple extra aces, yes, all plug wires. And, uh, yeah. Wow. Oh, boy. Learn something new every day, and you relearn something simple as well every day. Happy, safe, and healthy RVing, everyone. Take care. I've used a set of uh, $2 pliers in order to Pull, pull back the uh, idle screw right down there. Uh, so I get the idle down on the carb and uh, get up here. So now she's down to about 750, between 750 and 800 RPM, which is about where she needs to be at idle. So that's pretty good. Vacuum is up there at like 19 pounds. It's kind of crazy where the vacuum's at, but it is it is up there. And uh, I'm just gonna give her a few uh, throttle blips and see how she does. Definitely running a little bit better. I also adjusted the distributor a little bit better, um, so it's not so advanced. You can see it's almost parallel with the back of the engine, which is about where it should be. So it's a lot better because it was kicked quite a bit. It kicked, turned quite a bit when I had it before. Probably because those two cylinders weren't firing at the right time. So yeah, there we go.